Chronicles of the Amber Princess, as I recall, Dorkin was my favorite character. Monsieur Bonaparte, may I speak with you a moment? May we? What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. Gentlemen enjoys people talking about him for too many reasons. His undeserved titles, more than ten in just four years, and each one more prestigious than the one before. You don't think he deserves them? If I had seen him on the battlefield, there might be some doubt. But that is not the case. The Queen would rather not risk losing him, so she consoles him with awards and titles. So you don't have a very positive opinion? His coveting French Catalonia does not encourage me to have one. I understand your point of view. Would you have any more information about the comforts Lord Mortimer spoke of? Nothing at all. Mortimer is very committed to secrecy when it comes to his conferences. But given the presence of Monsieur Peru and ourselves, I think it must concern France to some extent. Otherwise, I doubt he would have invited three Frenchmen to his table, huh? Does expression go beyond the nightmare mean anything to you at all? Well, metaphorically, yes. It sums up the career of a soldier quite well. I doubt that is what you want to hear, though. Indeed. That's surely not what I'm looking for. Well, monsieur, if you are looking for a phrase book, Lord Mortimer must surely have one, given the number of books he has. You ought to check in the library of the tower. You never know. Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service, day and night, sir. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? Mr. President, what do you think about your counterpart, Duke Manuel? I'm very surprised he was able to accept Lord Mortimer's invitation, given the political situation in Spain.
I wonder what promise Lord Mortimer could have made to make him agree to come here, given the circumstances. Who knows? Mr. President, can you tell me a little more about the coming conference? Of course, Louis. That's why we're here. Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory regularly organize meetings like this to put forward major projects. What do you mean by major projects? I'd prefer to let Lord Mortimer explain that to you, Louis. Let's say he brings together influential people in order to consider possible actions to undertake to guarantee the future of nations. Do you know the theme of the conference? Not in the slightest. None of the guests know the theme before arriving. But you'll see, everything will turn out fine. Don't worry. Go beyond the nightmare. Does this line remind you of anything in particular? You've caught me unaware here, Louis. Let me think about it a second. No, nothing comes to mind. Sorry, Louis, but I am unable to help you. Well, thank you for your time. Don't mention it, my young friend. Regarding your question on the nightmare, don't hesitate to question the others about it. Maybe one of them knows more than I do. That's a good idea. Thank you once again. I'll see you in a little bit. Louis, just the man. Good Lord, how did the king come to be executed? I would think that the order would have intervened. I invite you to speak about it with my mother as soon as she reappears. Uh, is there any news of her? I, well, I hope it won't be long before I find her, Your Eminence. Louis, I'm counting on you. If you don't find Sarah before my departure, I must ask you to give me back the letter I gave you. Well, don't worry about that, Your Eminence. Now you wanted to speak to me. I was wondering what to think of that Manuel Godoy. He is reputed to be a very ambitious character at every level. But his fate is unwavering. He is a staunch defender of the church. You can believe me. It's true there's much said about him. For better and for worse. But that is a prerogative of power, it would seem. His close ties with the queen, unfortunately, sully her government. Fortunately, we are not men to take heed of such gossip, are we? Of course not, Your Eminence. What a disgrace, nonetheless, for the king. I can only imagine. If I were to officiate at the court of Spain, believe me, I would speak out. She is of Bourbon lineage. By God's grace, she has a duty toward her blood. What can we expect, Your Eminence? Everything gets lost over the years. 
I'm sure a man like you is in the circle of trust. Would you know what the conference that Lord Mortimer mentioned is going to be about? Not really, my son. Well, be it Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory, uh, we are never informed about the theme of the conference before it begins. If I say the nightmare to you, does it make you think of anything? Hmm. Your question is strange, my son. Difficult to say. Could you at least tell me a little more about the context? Well, I mean, if it were a place or an object found on this island, what would you think of first? Hmm. The nightmare. No. I don't see anything. I'm sorry. Well, that's too bad. Ah, wait! I suppose it might be that horrible painting hanging in Lord Mortimer's study. Pretend not to be that interested. Right. Well, don't worry about it. I was... I was just curious. Thank you for everything, Your Eminence. I shan't take up any more of your time. You are welcome, my son. I will be seeing you, Louis. Atreus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid.
There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. So, what did my mother mean by going beyond the nightmare? The Book of the Mortimer Family. family ancestor, apparently. A painting about a siege dated. That's what you generally feed birds. Hmm, might come in handy. Let's take a closer look. Dark chocolate beans, very bitter. They're greatly prized in high society.
don't know. What have we got here? Well, it looks like a model. A model of a lock. As if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. Hmm. It looks like a war painting. Oh, it's dated. It's a book on the history of the Crusades. I don't think it has any connection with my research. The Coup de Lance by Paul Rubens. The Nightmare Painted by Fusilli in 1781. Ah, this must be what my mother was talking about. Now just need to find out what she meant by Go Beyond. Hey, looks like it's mounted on rails on each side. It should lift up, I think. There must be a mechanism somewhere. Now, what have we got here? Well, it looks like a model. A model of a lock. It's as if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. A minor bird. Sarah de Riche? Waldo, you know Sarah? Well, Waldo, is your master good? Dante's Purgatory. Why does your mind presume to flight when you're still like the imperfect grub, the worm before it's attained its final form? Charming. Hmm. Nope. No mechanism here. No, no mechanism here. <laughs> no mechanism here. Okay, no mechanism behind this painting. Well, I'll have to keep looking. I don't think this book can help me. Mm, no. Mm, let's look elsewhere.
no, no, what have we got here? Oh, it looks like a model. A model of a lock. As if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. Aha! I found it. Oh, what on earth is this? A ring lock now? Great. That's all I needed. Looks like there's a marker on number one on the second roller. I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. I don't know, what have we got here? Well, it looks like a model. A model of a lock. As if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. This painting isn't finished. And it looks like Mortimer probably did it. Not bad, but you can't exactly say it's been done in the style of the period. the family tree. Lord William Alexander Mortimer, lover of the arts and the sciences, he took up politics at an early age. After rapidly becoming influential, he decides to retire from public life. In order to organize conferences reserved for the elite, with the aim of finding answers to world problems. Blah, blah, blah. He's also an only son, and the book doesn't mention any known descendant. All right. For one, the women of the lineage are not mentioned at all. What a cavalier attitude. Right. Let's see. Who else is there? family tree. All right. For one, the women of the lineage are not mentioned at all. What a cavalier attitude. Right. Let's see. Who else is there? The 
direct descendant of William Alexander Mortimer I was born in 1195 on his father's return from the crusade. Only son, more discreet than his father, it states that he was widely traveled. He produced only one descendant named William Michael Mortimer. He died in 1275. There's no chapter dedicated to his mother. First, William Alexander Mortimer. He was born in 1131 and distinguished himself during the Third Crusade, during which he rubbed shoulders with Richard the Lionheart. He showed outstanding bravery during the Siege of Saint Jean d'Acre. He died in 1211 in the country of Westford at the age of 80. <laughs> what longevity? Nice. Nothing is mentioned about his wife. Well, well, history of the Mortimer lineage. Looks like his ancestors have always sought to improve society and have had an open attitude towards the arts. This seems to be the list of grants and sponsorships given by the Mortimer family. From 1235 to 1280, the Mortimer family granted an annual pension to Albert the Great, Archbishop of Regensburg, in order to fund his research in the writing of the Mirabilibus Munsi, books about the wonders of the world. In 1567, the Mortimer family financed the brickworks in Qinhongdao, in China, fitted out with 51 furnaces three and a half meters high, in guise of a protocol gift for Long King, the emperor of the Ming Dynasty. In 1489, the Mortimer family participates in the purchase of the Caravel Santa Clara from Juan Nino, ship owner, on behalf of Don Luis de la Cerda. The vessel will be renamed La Nina. In 1645, the Mortimer family allocated a pension to be passed down the generations to the Nerac family from Bordeaux, ship owners and refiners from father to son, a family known for their expeditions to Africa and America. From 1685 to 1720, the Mortimer family allocated an annual pension to Denis Papin for his brilliant works in pneumatics and hydraulics. That reminds me of spectacular experiments such as his first submarine, which didn't end all that well if I remember correctly. In 1772, Lord Mortimer made a donation of 112,000 pounds to the attention of Achille Basmarin, major ship owner of Bordeaux, for the construction of a ship, the Clary. In 1513, the Mortimers financed the expedition of Ponce de Lyon to the New World. That was the expedition that resulted in the discovery of Florida, in fact. In 1550, the Mortimer family financed half of the construction of St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow by way of protocol gift for Ivan Flor Vasilievich, one of the most beautiful religious buildings ever built. In 1550, the Mortimer family financed half of the construction of St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow by way of protocol gift for Ivan Flor Vasilievich, one of the most beautiful religious buildings ever built. In 1550, the oh, the family tree. For one, 
The women of the lineage are not mentioned at all. What a cavalier attitude. Right. Let's see. Who else is there? Many families kept documents of their history, but I've never seen anything like this before. Such regularity in writing them up through the generations, for such a long time. First time I've ever seen that. Mortimer gives considerable importance to his origins. That's undeniable. Oh, the family tree. First, William Alexander Mortimer. He was born in 1131 and distinguished himself during the Third Crusade, during which he rubbed shoulders with Richard the Lionheart. He showed outstanding bravery during the Siege of saint jean d'Acre. He died in 1211 in the country of Westford at the age of 80. <laughs> what longevity, nice. Nothing is mentioned about his wife. Got it wrong. It doesn't matter. <sighs> well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. A bird. Tell me the door code. Here I am talking to a bird. Shame on me. Oh, what have I done? It looks like I've killed him. Shit, I better not hang around. Now, now what have we got here? Well, it looks like a model, a model of a lock. As if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. Dante's Purgatory. Why does your mind presume to flight when you're still like the imperfect grub, the worm before it's attained its final form? Charming. Ah, oh, the family tree. direct descendant of William Alexander Mortimer I was born in 1195 on his father's return from the crusade. Only son, more discreet than his father, and states that he was widely traveled. He produced only one descendant named William Michael Mortimer. He died in 1275. There's no chapter dedicated to his mother.
Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. Painting depicting Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. Siege of Saint Jean d'Acre. It was a major conflict during the Third Crusade. Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus fought to take the town back. It was the Crusaders' first operation to take back the Kingdom of Jerusalem. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amade de la Salle. Strange. All the dates are all wrong. They indicate events that took place in the year 5000 and something? Wait, did I miss something? The famous call of Pope Urban II. Twenty years after the capture of Jerusalem from the Arabs by the Turks, Urban II convened the council. He promises a plenary indulgence to Christians who go and get Jerusalem back from the Turks. The result, the Jewish community on the road to Jerusalem found itself persecuted for no reason. 12,000 Jews would perish, not to mention the massacre of Ma'ara, where acts of cannibalism by Frankish crusaders were reported or even the capture of Jerusalem, where approximately 30,000 were left dead. It signaled the beginning of centuries of wars of religion. Or how Louis VII, King of France, eager to be pardoned for the death of thousands of innocent people in the fire of the Church of Vitry, convinces the Pope to authorize him to lead his own crusade. The result, in Germany, a new outburst of violence against the Jewish community and a monumental fiasco by poor Louis VII, cuckolded by his wife's uncle. The famous call from Pope Gregory VIII in his Odita Tremendi Bull of 5,187. Oh, the crusade where Richard the Lionhearted distinguished himself. It states the first sea blockade of Saint-Jean d'Acre was broken in the 12th month of 5,190 AL, whereas the siege had been going on for two years. painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre.
I get the impression I've seen that before. In fact, I've read something on the Crusades before in the study. He clearly loves the subject. Siege of Saint Jean d'Acre. It was a major conflict during the Third Crusade. Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus fought to take the town back. It was the Crusaders' first operation to take back the Kingdom of Jerusalem. the right dating system. History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amédée de la Salle. Strange. All the dates are all wrong. They indicate events that took place in the year 5000 and something? Wait, did I miss something? The famous call of Pope Urban II. 20 years after the capture of Jerusalem from the Arabs by the Turks, Urban II convened the council. He promises a plenary indulgence to Christians who go and get Jerusalem back from the Turks. The result, the Jewish community on the road to Jerusalem found itself persecuted for no reason. 12,000 Jews would perish, not to mention the massacre of Ma'ara, where acts of cannibalism by Frankish crusaders were reported, or even the capture of Jerusalem, where approximately 30,000 were left dead. It signaled the beginning of centuries of wars of religion, Or how Louis VII, King of France, eager to be pardoned for the death of thousands of innocent people in the fire of the Church of Vitry, convinces the Pope to authorize him to lead his own crusade. The result? In Germany, a new outburst of violence against the Jewish community. And a monumental fiasco by poor Louis VII, cuckolded by his wife's uncle. famous call from Pope Gregory VIII in his Odita Tremendi Bull of 5,187. Oh, the crusade where Richard the Lionhearted distinguished himself. It states the first sea blockade of Saint-Jean d'Acre was broken in the 12th month of 5,190 AL, whereas the siege had been going on for two years. I really thought I was close. 1,190. Isn't the right date when you subtract 4,000? I must have missed a subtlety. <sighs> well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. doesn't work. 5,190. I was pretty sure it was right. Maybe I didn't use the right dating system.
Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. 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 Doesn't work, damn it. I really thought I was close. 1,190. Isn't the right date when you subtract 4,000? I must have missed a subtlety. <laughs> a painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. Siege of Saint Jean d'Acre. It was a major conflict during the Third Crusade. Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus fought to take the town back. It was the Crusaders' first operation to take back the Kingdom of Jerusalem. I get the impression I've seen that before. In fact, I've read something on the crusade before in the study. He clearly loves the subject. This painting isn't finished. And it looks like Mortimer probably did it. Not bad, but you can't exactly say it's been done in the style of the period. Hey, there are two dates on this painting. 1154 AD and 5154 AL. Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. Coup de Lance by Paul Rubens. William Alexander Mortimer I, the twelfth month of Anna Lucis. 5,190. That's a funny date. That date in 5,000 is something again. Hmm. I wonder what in the world it means. painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. I get the impression I've seen that before. In fact, I've read something on the Crusades before in the study. He clearly loves the subject.
History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amédée de la Salle. Strange. All the dates are all wrong. They indicate events that took place in the year 5000 and something? Wait, did I miss something? Still not working. I get the impression I counted the wrong way. It must be one year more then, right? It doesn't work, damn it. I really thought I was close. 1,190. Isn't the right date when you subtract 4,000? I must have missed a subtlety. <laughs> Open sesame. <laughs> map of the Orient, indeed. Locked. shows the forces present in Europe, it's clear that France is surrounded by her enemies. However, a large number has been underlined in bold. 26 million. I know what it is. 
It's an estimation of my country's population. All our neighbors have far fewer inhabitants. This shows the forces present in America. Weakness of the Human Psyche by Guillaume Trimor. Hmm. He says, it is possible to drill an idea into someone by constant daily repetition until the mind gives in, and goes on, there are hundreds of good ways to live life, but you only need one to convince the masses that it's the only one possible. <laughs> the author isn't letting any ethical principles get in his way, is he? Great, honey. shows the forces present in Africa. This is unexpected activity in this sector. It looks like there are also many unknowns, even for Mortimer. Moreover, it shows a fair number of sea voyages being organized towards the American continent. <laughs> no doubt with slaves. How many men are broken in this trade? Tens of thousands each year, according to what people say. Let's see what you've been hiding, Lord Mortimer. <laughs> 